Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight we are back in the Iowa and we're on Haven. But this isn't going to be your normal run of the mill match. No siree bob. This is going to be a stalemate. A really really nasty stalemate. Um but you'll see how I handle the situation and uh, maybe learn something in the process, who knows. You guys can let me know in the comments below if I could have done something better. And I will let you know if I could have done something worse. <laughs> that's that's how that goes. Battle no. Stars. Anyway, so we're in the we're in the Iowa, we're spawning on Haven, and we are in the uh, northern spawn. So initially I am a little timid about pulling straight out in front of everybody because there's always a destroyer. There's three destroyers on the enemy team, and there's always destroyers going to the center of the map. And when they go to the center of the map, you get spotted early, and you're in a crossfire, and bad things happen to you. However, I'm going to do just that anyway. Um, I'm going to try to push forward. Had to mute a teammate there because uh, he had some, some sort of mic issue. It was really, really obnoxious. Uh, also, didn't realize that I uh, left this on, so I just want to make sure that you guys weren't able to hear the, uh, the teammates. Hopefully you weren't. Uh, but we're going to push forward anyway. And I'm not gonna lie, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a a match for digging in and doing everything you can. But it's gonna get pretty exciting, especially towards the end. So hopefully you guys are ready. We've got a King George out here directly ahead of us. I fire at him, and then I realize the sit up on my right, so I go ahead and fire at him with the rear guns. Keep it, you know, keeping your head on a swivel, knowing what your ship can do and where it can fire. We get two penetrations on the King George for 9,500, and we hit the uh, Sinop over there for about the same. So a good opening salvo giving us 20,000 damage. Not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, hello, Yudachi. Hello, Yudachi. This isn't preferable. Now, given the choice between hitting a Sinop or a Yadachi, I'm going to probably take the Yadachi more times than not, because Yadachis are more dangerous to me than Sinop. Except, I get the worst dispersion on the planet, and he's able to avoid them with ease. Now, luckily, the enemy Yadachi is getting his absolute tail kicked in. But unfortunately, I think he's going to get away with it for now. He's still spotted though. Anybody could finish him off. All they gotta do is finish him off. He is burning. Maybe he'll burn to death. Is it gonna be the case? Is he gonna burn to death? Oh, come on. Oh, he put it out. No. Kill the little, oh, and then he disappears. Kill the little guy. Now, obviously there are torpedoes on the way. We're not gonna push around the corner, which is one of the good reasons to have your, uh, your plane going right now. We are just outside of uh, guaranteed acquisition on the uh, Yudachi, unfortunately. But we have a Gneisenawa here who's broadside on, but then there's this King George who's actually coming out to play. So uh, we'll go ahead and fire the King George because he's going to sail out into us. And the uh, Gneisenawa was going to sail behind the island. And we get 14,000 damage off the side of the King George. Now to the King George's credit, he's going to survive all the way the until the late stages of this match, even though he just got punched right in the kisser. Uh, but, that being said, he's not going to have himself a very good game. You'll see what I mean by what the enemy is going to do. Now, I am very fortunate in this match to have teammates who actually defend my base, because I was not defending the base at all in this match. I pushed forward, I put myself in a position to... Uh, to bait the enemy into a fire, uh, firefight that they weren't, you know, going to get the better of me in. And while I do a pretty good job of distracting the enemy team for the most part, you'll see what I mean about not defending the base here in a few moments. Now, as you can see, we have a cruiser defending the base, we have a battleship defending the base, we have a destroyer back there helping to defend the base, and we get a nice shot on the Vanguard taking a good chunk off of them once again, and our damage total is going up. Now notice I'm keeping an eye on the map. Akatsuki gets inside three kilometers, therefore he is automatically detected because I have the uh, target acquisition mod because I'm a tier seven battleship. So 
As he comes around the corner, I've already told my teammates about it, and I've got guys behind me that are willing to shoot him, and they are in much better position to shoot him than I am. The only regret that I have here is not actually keeping myself in a position to keep this Akatsuki spotted. However, it didn't matter because our New Mexico, by the way, didn't even notice we had a New Mexico uh, in this match. Our Tier 5 battleship, the New Mexico, manages to take out the Akatsuki. Uh, with a little bit of help from his teammate right there next to him. Now, I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm going to push forward. At this time, I didn't realize that they'd already killed the Akatsuki. I was just thinking in my head i got to get close enough to detect the guy while he's in a smoke screen, and the, uh, in the friendlies can finish him off. Now, as I'm charging forward, I am fully aware that there is a guy in a Yadachi heading straight for our base. And you can see right there, I'm like, ah, oh, I should probably go back. This is going to be a bad decision by me. This is horrendous. And then I was like, you know what? Screw it. If I lose, I lose. I'm just going to push forward and try to uh, get to the enemy and start harassing them. As you can see, there is quite the conglomerate of enemies at their base. Uh, that's not a good strategy. But luckily for me... I'm going to get away with not going back to the base, which, in all fairness, I should have gone back to the base. It is everybody's job to defend the base. I should have gone back, or at least tried to look back and help see if I can hit the Yudachi as he's on his way in. Now, King George realizes real quick that he's broadside onto an Iowa, who has already hit him for 15,000 damage once in this match, as he takes a nice salvo from presumably the Gunaizenawa who's next to me. Pretty sure it's Gneisen now that's next to me. Anyway, we're going to get a little too close to this, uh, this island here, but it's intentional. I don't want to sail out in front of the entire enemy team here because I, that's a fight I can't possibly win. You just can't. You can't put any ship in front of that many people and expect to survive. It's just not going to work. Now, the Sinop is angled away slightly. But uh, unfortunately, we don't have a shot yet. We're just kind of waiting for the uh, mountain icon to go away so that we don't run in or to uh, shoot the shoot the guy. But we do get the shot at the Belfast. We citadel him, taking us up to almost 70,000 damage. And that I can guarantee that that Belfast is not a happy camper. But as you can see, vanguards, uh, King George, Belfast, all shooting HE at me. But only one of them can actually hit me because of the island. I'm using the island as cover, and that's limiting who can actually shoot me. Now, the sit up obviously, is shooting AP at me, uh, but I'm battle tanking it, so it's not that big a deal. The problem is, and I'll be honest, I probably should have checked to see if I could hit the, uh, hit the Belfast here, because he's kind of sitting right in his smoke screen and firing his guns while broadside, so it would have been a good idea, but I want to try to get the Sinop out of the match. I was going to see if Sinop would give us a broadside. Unfortunately, he doesn't. Uh, but we do have this battleship right next to us. And it looks vaguely familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> we'll just call that one the Wisconsin. <laughs> but anyway... Two big girls sitting right next to each other. Not gonna lie. Anyway, we're gonna take a shot at the King George because maybe it'll go, maybe it won't, and of course we don't quite get anything out of it. Um, but keep an eye on the map. Now, as we're dug in here, and of course I'm not trying to get, like, I'm not trying to rub all over this guy behind me. As you can see, I'm already turning to go forward again. Uh, but I wanna draw these guys out, and as you see, the Belfast takes the bait. And, in fairness, he should be gone with the next salvo. Wait for it. Shot out. Come on, baby. With two Iowas firing at him, he should be no nowhere left in this world. However, he gets away with it. Completely gets away with it. I'm fairly confident my teammate shot me in the butt, and uh, he just got the dispersion of dreams and managed to sit right in the middle of all my shells at only 10 kilometers from a dispersion build Iowa that is capable of shooting, you know, 24 miles or something like that, accurately. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, clearly, clearly the luckiest guy on the planet. And his luck is going to hold. Look at this. Just the worst dispersion on the planet manages to leave him just enough gap to get away every single time. But as you can see, 
his teammates are starting to grow a little restless. They want a piece of this action, too. And uh, more importantly, it's another Iowa. Now, here's the thing about Iowas. If you're broadside on, you're asking for a paddling. And when there are two Iowas here ready to shoot you, this is not going to end well for you. As we take a decent salvo and hit him, you know, one penetration, not too much. But what is this Iowa behind me shooting at? He's literally trying to shoot the guys on the right instead of shooting the guy who's right in front of his face. Like, he could easily shoot that Iowa. Now, this Iowa, to his credit, that we're fighting against, is going to come up in here and get him some of this action. Uh, but before he does, I've got to try to get rid of the Cinnup. This guy has been getting away with absolutely sailing broadside to two Iowas for too long. And this time, he's going to get away with it again. <laughs> and once again... The Iowa to my left is just not making the right choice of who he's engaging. He's shooting at the guys on the right instead of taking the obvious target as the Belfast is raining uh, fire on our heads. Now notice the Gneisenau are coming through the middle behind us. Now we still have teammates behind us defending the middle. So that's not the worst thing in the world. Sinop once again just absolutely begging for it. We fire the guns at him. Are we going to finish him off? Of course not. Why would we do that? We're going to have a gap just the size of a ship to allow him to skate away once again and get away with it. But Gneisenauer is coming in for some action. Unfortunately for Gneisenauer, he's not being sneaky. Everybody sees it coming, and every single one of us is ready for him. As you can see, my buddy in the Iowa behind me manages to absolutely wreck his face. And then he's going to launch his torpedoes at said Iowa. I've got to turn my ship so I don't ram him. I don't want to force him into torpedoes. So i got to turn my ship a little bit. And uh, we're going to see if we can't touch this Gneisenauer. What do you think? He gets hit one more time. Come on. Now, at this point, I realize he's not going to be broadside to us, which is unfortunate. And I make the actual dumb choice here of uh, while I'm fighting a Gneisenauer, using my damage control to knock out two fires. Now, the problem with this is, if this guy launches his torpedoes and hits me, which he's likely to do at this sort of range, I may actually flood to death. It is a thing. But we got lucky. He was never in a position to actually launch torps at me, and so we got pretty lucky. However, this Iowa that we were fighting earlier has now taken this moment to push up. Now. The, the problem that these teammates or these enemies make is just coming in one at a time. We have three battleships right here ready to take you on as we take off a nice chunk off of that Iowa while he's battle tanking. The other thing is, I'm really, really good at one-on-one -on -one battles in battleships. If you're in a battleship and I'm in a battleship and we're, you know, both battle tanking each other, I know where I gotta shoot to get the most damage per salvo. So, I also know that if I can try to shoot your guns, I get an advantage. And right now I'm begging that he doesn't shoot my guns as we get the ship in reverse just in time to bounce all of his shots right off the bow. And then we take a shot right through uh, the front. We're aiming at his guns, didn't hit his guns, but we did get some penetration through the superstructure as my uh, teammate here in the other Iowa was unable to do. But I'm also trying to open up some room and make sure that this Iowa can't ram me. I know what's coming. This guy is clearly trying to ram somebody. It's just, who is the better target, me or the other Iowa? Now, I only have 25,000 hit points. Does the other Iowa have more than me? I don't know. But we take out one of his guns temporarily. We're backing off to the side. He gets a very good salvo that time into this Iowa. And unfortunately for this Iowa, he's got to turn broadside to somebody in order to, to ram them. So, uh... He's going to try, and actually, maybe not. Maybe he wasn't trying to ram this guy. And as you can see, I hate that stupid target lock thing. There we go. Come on. Two, one, and die. Down he goes. And that, my friends, gives us the points lead. Or no. No, it doesn't. We actually still don't have the points lead at this point. But the Belfast decides to come out and fire his guns. The ship is on fire. We see a smoke screen on the other side of the map. As long as we don't fire our guns, he can't see us. But he comes out of his smoke screen, and unfortunately, he had already tipped everybody off to his location. 
And that's going to be the killer for his team as he goes down. Now, at this point, I realized that both of these guys that are left are one-shot kills. And I was hoping to get the drop on them because I could easily get a double strike to end this match. It's not that difficult to get a little bit of damage, which would be enough to kill these guys. So, as you can see, I'm trying to see if I can get a shot over the island. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to. Uh, it, they're just too close. The guy behind me shoots me in the, the back again as he's trying to shoot over the islands. So I come out and I'm like, okay, King George is dead. Shoot at the Sinop. I know I'm going to take a Citadel here most likely, and we do. But unfortunately, we get neither kill. We bounce every round off of both a King George and a Sinop. What is that? <laughs> but it's okay. We managed to uh, not get the double strike kill at the end. We get 144,000 damage. We hold. We get the Dreadnought medal. We get the un... Was it unsinkable? No, because that was the last match. But we get Dreadnought. We get First Blood. We get High Caliber. And we get uh, Confederate. So not a bad little game. And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button. Leave a comment below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And as always, I will see you in the next video.